Today we've got an integral from everyone's favorite neighborhood integral suggester. And so what we want to do is find the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of x over x cubed plus 1. And we're going to use two facts, one of which we will derive, and the other one I've done on the channel a couple of times. So the first is that the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the m, natural log of x, is minus 1 over m squared. So that's, that holds for lots of values of m, but we're just really going to be focusing on natural numbers. But in fact, all you really need is the real part of m to be bigger than negative 1. And then we'll use the like famous sum of reciprocals of squares formula as well, that the sum of the reciprocal of squares is pi squared over six. Okay, so let's get to this first. So the way that I'm gonna attack this is by using a substitution, although you could definitely prove this formula by induction as well. Okay, so the substitution that I will make is setting x equal to e to the u. Okay, but notice that that means that u is equal to the natural log of x, and it also tells us that dx is equal to e to the u du. And I just realized that this should in fact be minus one over m plus one squared. That was a close one. Maybe some of you guys even made some comments about this mistake, but I fixed it just in time. Okay, so that's kind of the start of our setup. And now let's see what else we have. When x is equal to zero, um, u is equal to minus infinity. And then we would take into account the limiting behavior of natural log. Okay, furthermore, when x is equal to one, we have u is equal to zero because the natural log of one is zero. Okay, so that sorts out our entire substitution. So now we can write this as the integral from minus infinity up to zero of, let's see, we have e to the m u, that's because we have e to the u to the m power. And then we have times u, so that's from our natural log of x, and then times e to the u du. And that's from this bit right here. Okay, so let's rewrite this a little bit. This is going to be the integral from minus infinity up to zero of u times e to the m plus one times u du. But now we can use maybe a tabular integration or the di method version of integration by parts to do this pretty quickly. So let's make our chart here. Let's say we take derivatives down this column and integrals or antiderivatives down this column. So we always want to put the function that simplifies undertaking differentiation in the derivative column. So that would be u in this case. And then we'll put the rest in the integrate column or the antiderivative column. So that's m plus 1 u in the exponent there. Okay, so now taking derivatives, we get 1 and then 0, and then we'll have all zeros after that. Antiderivatives will give us 1 over m plus 1 e to the m plus 1 times u, and then 1 over m plus 1 squared e to the m plus 1 times u. Now we match on the diagonal like this, and then we alternate the signs. And that's our quick way of finding that antiderivative. So we'll get something like this, u over m plus 1 e to the m plus 1 times u, and then minus 1 over m plus 1 quantity squared e to the m plus 1 times u. And then we need to evaluate this whole thing minus infinity to 0. Okay. So let's see, plugging minus infinity in will give us zero for both of these terms. By plugging minus infinity in, I really mean taking the limit. We might have to use L'Hopital's rule here, but here it's pretty clear because we have an e to the minus infinity type term. And then when we plug zero in, we get zero for this term, because u evaluated at zero is zero and e to the zero is one. And here we get minus one over m plus one squared, which was the final answer that we wanted for this integral in the first place. So we've derived this identity and now we're ready to jump into the main goal. So we just got finished driving this identity and now we're ready to tackle our main goal.
And we'll start by splitting this into two integrals. And that'll be the integral from zero to one of natural log of x over x cubed plus one dx. And then the integral from one to infinity of natural log of x over x cubed plus one dx. And that's really helpful because the interval from zero to one maybe inverts to the integral from one to infinity and vice versa. And what I mean by inverts is under the inversion that sends x to one over x. So that motivates some sort of change of variables either for this one or for this one. But since this is an infinite region of integration, maybe we should invert this back to zero to one. And that's exactly what we'll do. So let's take this and make a substitution. So my substitution will be u equals one over x, which is the same thing as saying x is one over u. But that means that dx is minus one over u squared du, just using the power rule. And furthermore, when x is equal to one, that tells us that u is equal to one. And as x approaches infinity, that tells us that u is approaching zero. So that tells us how we should change all of these bounds of integration as well as swap everything out. Okay, so I'll bring this first integral down. It's the integral from zero to one natural log of x over x cubed plus one dx. And then I have plus the integral from, let's see, one to zero, because we're changing bounds of integration, natural log of one over u because x is one over u, and then over one over u cubed plus one, and then dx is du over u squared with an extra minus sign. But in fact, I'm gonna take that minus sign and use it to change my order of integration. So I have that. Okay, but now I look here in the denominator and notice that this u squared will almost cancel this out to look exactly like what we started with. So we can make it do that entirely by multiplying by another u. So let's do that. So we'll put another u in the denominator, which means we need to put a u in the numerator. And now let's see what that leaves us with. We have the integral from zero to one, natural log of x over x cubed plus one dx. And then plus, actually, I'm gonna change this to minus the integral from zero to one of u times the natural log of u. Here I use the fact that the natural log of one over u is negative natural log of u. And then this u cubed will multiply through here and leave us with one plus u cubed du. And now I'll just make kind of a very, very simple change of variables back in terms of x. So I'll just replace all of these u's with x's, which is totally okay because that's just our variable of integration. And that will allow us to combine these a little bit more easily. So let's see what that leaves me with. I'll have the integral from zero to one, and then one minus x times the natural log of x over one plus x cubed dx. Good, so I think that's a good place to start the next board. So here's where we left this game. We've got the integral from zero to one, one minus x natural log of x over one plus x cubed. Now we're gonna use a geometric series expansion to change this into the integral of a sum or the sum of an integral because we can exchange the order here by the dominated convergence theorem. In particular, we'll use the fact that the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of u to the n is one over one minus u. So we're doing that where u is in fact equal to minus x cubed. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. That'll leave us with the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity. And then I have minus one to the n, the integral from zero up to one of x to the three n times one minus x times the natural log of x dx. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna distribute this x to the three n through onto both the one and the minus x and split this up into two sums. So that'll leave me with the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n. And then I have the integral from zero to one of x to the three n natural log of x dx. And then I'll have minus the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n. And then the integral from zero to one of x to the three n plus one natural log of x dx. Okay, so just to reiterate, that's from taking this, distributing it through, and then splitting this into two sums. But now look at what we've got. We've got this type of integral here and this type of integral here, which is exactly the tool that we developed at the beginning of this video. So that means we can replace these with this kind of rational expression in the exponent. In particular, we have this first one is the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n. And then this will be one over three n plus one squared. And then we pick up a minus sign because there's a minus sign built into this formula. I'll just bring it out here. And then we have something similar over here. This is gonna be the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n over three n plus two squared. And we have a plus sign. We picked up another minus sign, but then it canceled with this minus sign. Okay, now from here, I'm gonna split this into even and odd parts. So that's gonna actually be really nice because I'll no longer need my negative one to the n because we know when n is even, negative one to the n is positive one. And when n is odd, it's obviously negative one. So here, this will be my even branch, my odd branch. And then here, this is my even branch and my odd branch. Okay, so let's see. When I've got my even branch, I'll have minus the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of, I no longer need a minus one to the n because it's minus one to an even number. And then I'll have one over six n plus one squared. Because even values of n are just of the form two times n. Okay, and then what do I get for the other part? So I'll have plus the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of one over, let's see, this is going to be six n plus four quantity squared. Again, that's because all odd numbers n are of the form two n plus one. And so if we plug two n plus one into this, the whole thing turns into six n plus four. Also, if n is odd, negative one to the n is negative, that cancels this minus sign out. Okay, good. Now let's do the same thing over here. So we'll get plus the sum as n goes from zero to infinity. The even part will now look like one over six n plus two quantity squared, and then we'll have minus the odd part. So the odd part will pick up a minus sign just as it did over here, but there's no minus sign to cancel. Okay, so let's see, the odd part will give us one over six n plus five quantity squared. Okay, so we've got these sums of four terms. Okay, so let's bring that up and then we're actually in the home stretch. So here's where we left the problem, which seems extremely complicated, but it's all about to fall together. So I've moved some of these sums around just to put the ones that look similar next to each other. So I've got my sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over six n plus two squared and one over six n plus four squared. The important thing to notice is this is one over an even number squared. Furthermore, every even number is of the form 6n plus 2, 6n plus 4, or 6n plus 6. You might say, well, what about just 6n? Well, since we're starting at n equals 0, we can't do that, so we need to start with 6n plus 6. So I'm actually going to take advantage of that, and I will add a sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 6n plus 6 here, just to complete it out so that we've got all of the even reciprocals of squares. Just kind of partitioned into these parts. 
But if I add that, that, mean, that means I need to subtract it as well. So let's maybe subtract it over here. So this is gonna be minus the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of one over six n plus six squared, because I don't wanna change anything. Okay, now we're gonna do the same kind of thing with these odd reciprocals of squares. So this is six n plus one, six n plus five, that means we're missing six n plus three. So let's add that in there here. So this is gonna be the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over six n plus three squared. But now we didn't actually add that, we subtracted it because we have this minus sign here. So we need to add it back in so nothing changes. So I'll do that. Plus the sum is one n goes from one to infinity of six n plus three squared. Okay, nice. Now I'm gonna collapse everything here, which I've underlined, as well as everything here that I've underlined into one sum, or actually into one sum each. So let's underline these with different colors just so that we're not confused. Okay. So let's see what we have. Like I said, this is a representation of all of the even reciprocals of squares. So I can rewrite that as the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two n quantity squared. So I've re-indexed it a little bit as well, just so that it starts at one and I can write this as two n squared, kind of for ease of use. Okay, so let's maybe overline this in green to see where it comes from. And then we'll have minus the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n minus 1 squared. And so that's the stuff coming from the pink. Now I'm going to factor out the, some of the stuff from these two so that they look a little bit more similar to what we have. So I'll factor a 3 out of this top one, or actually a 3 squared. So this is going to be minus 1 over 9. And then I have my sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n squared. So notice that's like 1 over 4n squared. If I were to distribute the square, move the 9 through, and I have 1 over 36n squared. But that's 1 over 6 squared n squared. And up to an index change, that's the same as this. Okay, so we're good. Then we'll do the same thing here. So let's do plus one over nine. And then we'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two n minus one quantity squared for that. So again, doing the same sort of thing that we did for the other one. Now we can start combining some of this stuff together. So notice this and this are like terms. That gives us eight over nine. And then the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two n squared, so the sum of the reciprocal of the even squares. And then we'll have a minus 8 over 9, sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n minus 1 quantity squared, so the sum of the reciprocal of the odd squares. But now we're going to do a bit of a trick. So I'm going to add and subtract another copy of this term back in. So I'll do this by doing minus 8 over 9, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n squared, and then plus the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity times 8 over 9 of 1 over 2n squared, like that. Okay, nice. But now I'll take these two and put them together and observe that this is the sum of the reciprocal of the odd squares, whereas this is the sum of the reciprocal of the even squares. So if I put them together, I have the sum of the reciprocal of all of the squares, but multiplied by negative eight over nine. So I'll bring that down as minus eight over nine times the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. Again, because we have the odd ones here and then the even ones here. And now we can do a little bit of simplification. So notice two squared is four. Eight divided by four is two. So I can scrub this out and put a two right here because that's technically a four in the denominator. Then I can do the same thing over here as well. So that gives me a two over here as well. Then I can add those two together and I have four over nine. So that's gonna be four over nine, sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. But then I've got these two like sums that I can combine. That gives me negative 
4 over 9, and then the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, like that. But now that's my famous sum of reciprocal of squares, which, like I said, I've done on the channel a couple of times, but we'll just use the fact that this is pi squared over 6. So that gives me minus 4 over 9 times pi squared over 6. Let's see, that'll simplify a little bit. So I can cancel this down to a 2 if I cancel this to a 3. And that gives me negative 2 over 27 times pi squared as my final answer. And that's a good place to stop.